Okay, now it's recording. Mm -hmm. This week's sponsored beer is Miller Genuine Draft. <laughs> I guess I sponsor them because I pay for their beer. Can you do that? Can I do what? I pay for the beer. I can use it however I want to. Can you? As long they, as you they gave it to me for free. They wanted to give me free beer. I talk about them every week. As you can see, it's a little gray and cloudy out here at the, the, the education center. Um, you can so, see birds. Yeah, there's some birds in the trees. Uh, so we thought we'd take a moment since it's maybe threatening rain, maybe not threatening rain. There's a 100% chance of between, you know, zero and floods, I suppose. This is one of the places on the property that we like to hang out. Anyway, uh, I'm Brent. I'm Melody. And uh, we are Art of Tiny Living. Um, not too long ago, some folks over at the Go Travel on the Cheap, uh, Wayne and April, uh, contacted us and gave us a little challenge to maybe answer some thoughts and perspectives on things that were happening during this kind of time in our in our existence you know what's been affected by covid and shutdowns and other kinds of things that we may have encountered and so forth and um there's some various things that they were wanting to know and so we thought well we'd take an opportunity and and uh, share some thoughts with you there we take had their their kind of their thoughts on, on questions i'm just going to kind of take them in a more general sense uh they wanted to know what had been one of the biggest changes in our lifestyle since uh, the shutdown. Um, keep in mind that we're in Minnesota. Um, not everything is quite open yet, although that's only another week or so away before they go into the next phase of loosening uh, social restrictions to a, a little extent. Um, but what has been the biggest change in our lifestyle? Um, gosh, I suppose just the, the little bit of sense of freedom to kind of go and choose to do some more things that we would just go off and do. Um, we live in a tiny house here on the property and we have a mobile tiny house now. So we were expecting to maybe have an opportunity to go do some more camping and exploring and visiting things. Um, but we probably haven't had quite so much opportunity. Well, another thing is we usually have some kind of events out here and because we won't need to do all the work out here that's needed if all the events cancel until next year. So it's definitely been a, an interesting time for us economically. Um, don't get us wrong. We like, we love being out here and, um, spending our, our time here, but there's a purpose to do the things that need to, you know, that need to be for the center to function. And if we can't function, well, we move spots. <laughs> yes. We're up by the, uh, the honor room or, uh, kind of, a memorial type of facility. Everything that's over here is, uh, generally been planted by somebody on the behalf of remembering something or somebody else. Um, it's a nice little quiet spot. One of our other little favorite spots, um, for those of you paying, a, paying attention at home, yes, this is a par three slight dog leg to the left. <laughs> Just follow the white marker. And there's a lot, a lot of mosquitoes around us right now. There are. Might not stay here too long. I will just show it off long enough to. And we can answer a few questions while we're here. Because we're always thinking. <laughs> There's always more to say about stuff. So, I don't know. Maybe it'll make sense. Maybe it won't. But... What is a panic purchase you made during this lockdown? 
Hmm. I can't say we did any panic purchases. At <laughs> first, we were worried about the dog food. Yeah, pet food became kind of something that we wanted to make sure that we could keep a supply of. Um, but, I don't know, did we panic purchase? Um, no, we not so problem much. solved. Yeah, we problem solved. We uh, learned to make our own sanitizer wipes out of using a couple different products together. Um, and, well. and as far as the dog food goes, we went to an online place and signed up for a subscription and we actually found some pretty good dog food and every month it comes to us so we feel more that it's there where before we started that we couldn't find the dog food we wanted you know, walmart all the places were out yeah, specifically because we have one dog that gets an ear infection and so she has to be relatively grain free as much as possible and that was one of the brands that certainly disappeared from Walmart and um, some of the bigger uh, box store type of uh, facilities, targets and whatnot. Um, even took us a little while to find one on Amazon that was uh, comparable to what uh, we were trying to feed them. Well, we were worried about it because she had never eaten this kind and she's really picky about her food there's a lot of the grain free food that we just can't feed because she doesn't like it we've talked about doing the raw diet but there's no way we no it's, it's not. a lot of chicken to go through <laughs> although there are chickens chickens are available How many rolls of toilet paper do we have? <laughs> well, um, we have some. Our bathroom facilities is actually a uh, um, porta toilet. Uh, we have access to showers and other things, but uh, our bathroom is a porta toilet. So it gets serviced, it gets cleaned. Um, they have yet to have to tell us that they couldn't clean it because they didn't have any toilet paper. Well, we do have a little bit extra we bought when the the big packages. So we run out in the porta potty. We have backups. I can't say we have extra. We haven't stockpiled toilet paper. No, but there seems to be some. You know, it might not always be full of what it was. You know, oh, the flu. We're all going to get. The Quarantine food. <laughs> what do you like about quarantine food, Mel? It's kind of normal. It is kind of normal. Yeah. Mel doesn't probably get as much chocolate as she would prefer to have, <laughs> um, because just because we don't go out as often as we maybe would have. Are we exercising and staying fit? Well, we do a lot of work out here, and a lot of the work is physical in nature. So, um, ah, there's a pun. It's physical in nature. Um, dun, dun, so anyway, yeah, we we spend uh, a lot of time working out or have, getting exercise while we um, go out through, through about our day. Is when is the last time you've been to a campground? Last answer that one. Well, the last time we've actually been to a campground campground. Uh, was uh, five years ago, <laughs> kind of, sort of. Um, we did make a break for the 4th of July. One year we went up to, uh, towards the Duluth area, and we stayed at a campsite there. But we used to go down um, into Eagle Bend, Minnesota, and go to the state park that's right over there, or the state forest. Great Eagle. Me, uh, gr yeah, Great Eagle. Somewhere over there, out in the middle of nowhere, looking up on a map. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a state forest, um, usually pretty quiet. They got some walk-in areas, and because we were tenters basically at the time, it was great. We could really get away from people, and they had this little area that was down by a swamp, or what well, not, just a little, a, thick, a thicker pond, I guess is a better way to describe it. But it was only thick because it was lily pads and moss and thousands upon thousands of frogs 
uh, lived in that pond. It was great in the first part of the spring. We still get frogs up here, but nothing like it was located in that. So, but they're interested in knowing, uh, I don't know, what to what be, what be grateful for, you know. That we're here, we have this place. We're not stuck in the house in the city where we can't even go outside. Because you can't get away from people unless you lock yourself in your apartment or your house. We have over 40 acres here. Yeah, pretty hard to come into contact with anybody out here. But it's a beautiful place. Um, hope to spend a lot more time uh, being out here seasonally and uh, help them manage the facility under better circumstances. We're hoping events don't cancel, so then it makes everything we do worthwhile. And everything we do is worthwhile anyways. But other it gives us a, an excuse to party up a little bit and have some fun. <laughs> well, and other people can enjoy it other than us. But right now, it's mainly just us that's enjoying the whole property where we can have two, three hundred people in a season, sometimes more, that enjoy it. So anyway, I, I hope that uh, this kind of answers uh, Wayne and April's questions. Um, yeah, I guess the, really the things that affect us most is our, uh, our socialization. Um, you know, getting to see the people or friends that we, you know, like I said, we only get to see on a short-term basis, maybe once or twice a year, and, you know, it's good to enjoy. One of these days, we'll get back to being able to travel and see the people that we want to visit, and at least in a group bigger than 10, which is always possible. Anyway, we'd like to thank uh, yeah, Wayne and April from uh, Go Travel on the Cheap for inviting us to be a part of this conversation. Uh, we are Brent and Mel at Art of Tiny Living.